Also erstmal kleinen Big Up an äh, Mostari und Sintujan. Es ist manchmal auch ganz legitim, Kanaken einfach zum Lachen zu bringen mit Begriffen, ähm, die äh, vielen Leuten auf dem Schulhof ähm, Spaß gemacht hätten, simultan. Ähm, auch äh, hart PTSD bei mir oder anderen äh, Freunden ausgelöst haben, wenn man in die ähm, Kommentarfunktion der rechten Suppe, die ähm, auf jeden Fall wieder hart kocht in diesem Land geht. Um, and then I'm gonna switch to English because um, I think um, this conversation on the uh, intersection of ideology and capital accumulation is super important to have in a current trans-European climate that um, exists out of um, a France that um, is uh, within its hijab ban and conversations on failed integration um, integration um, uh, giving a high five to the uk that um, despite the um, big ass Meghan markle buckingham palace scandal uh, just published a report that says that they're um they kind of denies the existence of structural racism um in the uh, uk um and <laughs> uh even comes up with uh framing the um transatlantic slave trade as the caribbean existence and then at the same time um I think uh, within this climate and in, uh, a climate in Germany that we have already elaborated of burning migrant businesses and uh, um, similar neglect of um, uh, accepting the, the racist stru structures, um, I think um, it's super important to focus on the core and the origins of what is identity politics. And like um, Ashley Member said in his interview on the planetary, um, identity politics is um, what enabled the colonial system. It is what enabled the Holocaust. Um, and it's sad that divide and conquer is working and minorities are fighting each other, but we should focus on like, what the fuck actually is identity politics. And um, opposing to public opinion, Christian Gerlach writes in his book, um, The Extermination of Jews um, about the um, underlying economic reasons for the Holocaust. So while um, very often in public opinion, it's being framed as um, uh, a, a legacy of solely ideology, um, discriminating Jews and ghettoizing them since medieval times, there was reasons like, for example, the housing crisis, the profit of forced labor, um, or, um, um, wanting to uh, open up hospital beds. Um, so because of this, um, bringing differentiated bodies also into concentration camps and this historical um, uh, flirtation between capital and racism is of course something that structures the day-to-day -day reality of uh, racialized migrantized bodies. So if we use the term Nazi Hintergrund not to look at like, um, something that is solely an individual ideology, but a material condition that makes certain people have access to like generational wealth, whereas other people come from access of being migrantized laborers. This helps us analyze the current condition of historical trajectories. Structure of racism is an economic structure that, um, after the colonial system, the IMF and the World Bank took over and um, it's an uh, imperialist structure that makes people like um, you and I that live in the global north, for example, profit every day from a structure of racism. So while I am very much in support of the wealth tax Yossi Bartal is proposing in the um, German context, I think it is crucial to link these to broader conversations of um, how is restitution looking in regards to the neo-colonial um, power dynamics the IMF is um, enforcing uh, developing countries into.